Hi, thanks for joining us for this, uh, this training for the AC series load cells. Uh, the AC load cells are new for Cardinal. Uh, they're brand new, just releasing them. Uh, so what we're going to look at today is we're going to be comparing them to the SCA load cells, you, as you see in the diagram or the photos here. Uh, so you can see that the two are the same general shape, uh, they're the canister style, they're both compression load cells. Uh, but the overall shape is quite a bit different. What we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be seeing how the AC load cells can actually replace the SCA load cells. So first we're going to look at just some general specifications for the load cells. Uh, the SCA load cells come in 50K, 100K, 120, and 200K capacities. The AC load cells are in 50K and 100K. So anytime that there is an SCA load cell, uh, we will actually be able to replace it if it's 50K or 100K with, a, with an AC load cell of the same capacity. If the situation, if a customer has a, um, an installation that requires 120K or 200K load cells, then we have to stick with the SCAs for that particular installation. Otherwise, it would be, it'd be really great to push uh, towards an AC load cell. We're gonna see several benefits as we go forward here. One thing to notice is that both are NTEP and OIML approved. So um, legal for trade situations, um, if an SCA load cell is in a legal for trade situation, the AC load cell can be placed in that same situation. Also uh, mentioned that they are compatible with each other, the SCAs and the ACs. So in a situation uh, where you, uh, there's, let's say a truck scale with eight load cells, they're SCA load cells. Um, if we need to replace a load cell with an AC load cell, um, it will actually fit in the same spot and it will not affect that skill being legal for trade and that applies to NTEP and OIML both. The load cells each have uh, water protection which is pretty standard for, for our load cells. Um, the SCA load cells have an IP68 rating uh, against water ingress. And uh, so what that basically means is um, it's rated so that the load cell can be uh, submerged in water uh, for, for what's considered a longer period of time. Uh, so the steps go up for like short uh, periods of time and long periods of time. And then the next step up is what we see for the AC load cells, which is the IP69K rating. Uh, that means that the load cells can actually have uh, high temperature, high pressure directly sprayed on them. And so that's uh, so in situations where there may be a tank application, let's say, uh, where the, the environment's very wet, the AC load cells would be a really great use in that situation. Uh, where the SCAs would probably would give some good protection, the ACs are going to give better protection. Again, especially if it's a wash down environment. And then finally on this slide, uh, the AC load cells have 50 foot of cable, a load cell cable, and the uh, SCAs only have 35 feet. So that gives uh, a little more flexibility for junction box placement, things like that. So a little, little uh, extra cable gives us some more flexibility. As far as physical specifications for the load cells, uh, both have a stainless steel body. Uh, so just the main canister uh, that you see for the load cell, uh, it's stainless steel on both of them. The load cups are quite a bit different from the SCA load cells to the AC load cells. Um, the SCA load cell cup, uh, load cups are a hardened stainless steel, and then in the uh, AC load cells, they're a uh, they're a plated alloy steel. So both very durable materials. The, the interesting thing about the SCA or sorry, the AC load cells. Um, is there we do consider them to be very robust and that's because the point between the load cell and whether it's like the scale if it's on top or whether it's the mounting plate something like that on the bottom the the actual uh, point between the load cell and uh, the the part of the load cup that's between the load cell it's being smashed in that in that place uh, is actually much thicker on the ac load cells so on the sca load cells that's only about a quarter inch thick on the AC load cells, it's over seven eighths of an inch thick. So almost almost four times um, the thickness there. So that gives us um, a really great uh, sturdy place where that weight's being placed. I mentioned, so in the previous slide, it showed the anti-rotation for the AC load cells. Uh, so what that means 
is um, the notched. So you'll see here, um, this shows the notched uh, load cup. The other one is not notched, so this, it would just be smooth around the top lip. And so that notch um, fits on the bottom side of the load cell. Um, it's the, the ends of the load cells are notched also. Uh, so it fits on the not on the bottom end of the load cell and it uh, keeps the load cell from spinning. So uh, how that works is the top of the column of the load cell and the bottom of the column actually have a slightly con convex surface on them. Uh, in this diagram, it's, it's really exaggerated. Uh, if you're actually looking at the load cell, it's hard to tell. You can feel it and you can see it, but you have to look really close. But what that means is the point where the load cell is contacting the load cup, in this case, is actually a very small surface area. So uh, in a situation where, let's say, there's a tank application, if, let's say it's outside and the wind's blowing, um, the movements on the scale might be very microscopic, where the load cell and the load cup, where that connection is moving. Um, but over time, those little microscopic movements can add up to actual movement rotation of the load cell. So this helps uh, keep that from happening. And the reason that, it's, that uh, this particular load cup makes a difference is where, the, uh, where the, the load cup sits like on the mounting plate um, that, that is, sits on top of the ground or on top of where, or not the ground, but on top of the foundation, whatever the situation is. Um, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of surface area there. Whereas with the, uh, where the load cell column contacts the load cup, it's a very small area. And with the larger surface area uh, between the load cup and the mounting below, um, it actually is very resistant to being moved. Just imagine 20,000 pounds on this one spot and it's, it's not going to want to move. And then the last uh, physical thing we want to look at are the mounting dimensions. Uh, one of the first slides we looked at showed a picture of the SCA and the AC load cells side by side. Um, the dimensions as far as how the scale or how the uh, load cell mounts in the scale are identical. So here we can see that the diameter of the load cup uh, is two and a half inches. So we talked about the that thick that thickest part uh, where the load goes on the load cup uh, is a lot thicker for the AC load cells, but the overall diameter is the same. So again, an SCA load cell can be taken out of a situation and an AC load cell can be put directly in its place. Along with that, the overall height for the load cell from the bottom of the lowest load cup to the top of the highest load cup is seven and three quarter inches. So uh, that's that mounting dimension. Again, take one out, put the new AC cell in. So if we're talking about these load cells being direct replacements for the SCA load cells, uh, we also need to look at the electrical specifications. So the two of the most common things are the millivolt per volt output. Both load cells have two millivolt per volt outputs and um, both of them have the same range of excitation they can receive from the indicator. So if there's an indicator um, that is currently working with an SCA load cell, an AC load cell can easily be put in its place. If we're looking at the uh, resistance readings for the load cells, a lot of times technicians will check these in the field uh, to check for a bad load cell. For the excitation resistance, those readings are going to be almost identical. The only difference is there's a slightly tighter, tighter tolerance for the AC load cells than on the SCAs. Uh, but the core reading that we're looking for is uh, you know, 1,150 ohms, and it should be pretty close to that. For the signal readings, uh, there is a difference. Uh, so the SCA, or the, yeah, the SCA load cells, um, the target there is 1,050 ohms. And in the AC load cells, it is uh, 1,005 ohms. And it, it is a little bit of a difference. It's not something that's going to, it does not affect the, uh, the replaceability, that uh, compatibility, I should say, uh, between the AC and the SCA load cells. But it is a difference that we just, if a technician's in the field doing this test, we wanna make sure that uh, they're aware of that. One thing I will note, because um, we keep talking about the compatibility. We've actually had a test scale where we had uh, half of the load cells were SCA load cells and the other half were AC load cells. 
and there was no issue getting all of the low cells trimmed in using the potentiometers on the trim board just like we normally would. I was also told that we actually still have plenty of room to work with so it's not like we had to really um, just really go to the maximum limits of the trim board to make it work. It was it was the tri uh, system really didn't couldn't tell the difference. And this last point here is where we're probably going to be spending the rest of the training time. Uh, so the SCA load cells come with four wires, four leads, uh, two excitation wires, two signal wires, and then a shield. Uh, so we typically just focus on the excitation and the, and the uh, signal there. The AC load cells actually have six leads. So there are two excitation wires, two signal, and then also two sense leads, and then the shield also there. Uh, this is uh, this makes us available to put these load cells in a lot of international applications where the scale sensing um, is supposed to go all the way to the load cell. It's designed that way. Um, however, uh, we do have, and this is what we'll be looking at in a moment, a way that the SCA, sorry, the AC load cells will be able to fit in um, as far as the four wire connection goes, just like the AC sorry, just like the SCA cells do. So again, we're talking fully compatible and the uh, wiring issues, what we wanna clear up with these following slides. So here we see a diagram of what the wires look like coming off of the AC load cells. You'll see that there are, again, six wires plus the shield at the bottom. So the um, sense essentially ties in with the excitation. So the plus sense ties in with the plus excitation, minus sense ties in with the minus excitation. So on the left, you'll see the six wire connection that we just saw on the slide before. Um, on the right, what we see is what that looks like in a four wire connection. So if we're not wanting to use sense leads in an installation uh, and we're wanting to just use excitation and just use signal, uh, the one on the right is what we're, what we're looking for. So you'll see that essentially the sense and the excitation are tied together. So the plus sense is essentially tied to the plus excitation, minus sense tied to the minus excitation for these installations. And these will actually come from the factory installed like that. So the, and, um, so the minus sense will be soldered to the minus excitation and the minus, uh, sorry, the positive sense will be soldered to the positive uh, excitation. There was discussion about what the best way was to go about um, using these in a four load cell or a four wire connection. And what we determined was um, if we just you know, clipped off the wires or tried to tape them off, something like that, there's a potential for there to be a short. And if an, the plus uh, sense or the minus sense short to anything in the junction box, it can cause a lot of problems that could potentially be very difficult to track down. So what we're doing here is we are uh, tying, intentionally tying um, that sense wire somewhere where it's going to be out of harm's way um, and it's going to, we're going to make sure that it causes no problems. And that's, that's why we decided to solder the sense and the excitation wires together. So to compare that with the SCA uh, wiring, um, so we, here we have the SCA on the left and the AC four wire connection on the right. What you'll notice is some of the wiring the colors are very, very similar. Uh, so the signal, the red is the plus signal and the white is the minus signal. For the excitation, the green on the SCAs um, is the plus excitation. And on the AC load cells, it's still green, but just keep in mind it has the blue positive sense wire soldered to it. Same thing with the minus excitation. On the SCA load cells, the minus excitation is black. And then on the AC load cells, the minus excitation is still black, but it has the yellow wire soldered to it, the yellow wire being the minus sense. I do want to mention the, uh, the yellow wire specifically. Because you'll notice in the SCA load cells, the yellow wire is the shield. We put a yellow heat shrink on the shield wire. On the AC load cells, the shield uses a clear heat shrink on it. So um, on a new load cell, there shouldn't be any confusion because um, the, the yellow wire is going to be soldered to the black wire. Uh, so that should make it, uh, make it obvious that the, um, 
that that's not the shield wire, that something else is the shield wire. Uh, but it is something that we, that is likely to come up. And uh, just again, because uh, a lot of our load cells, we use yellow heat shrink. So just want to make that point, make that clarification with this colored wire here. And um, here's, so we have the diagram on the left and we have an actual photo on the right of what those wire connections are going to look like. So you can see on the top, the green and blue wires are soldered together, uh, red wire by itself, then we have the black and yellow solder together, white wire by itself, and then the clear, uh, the clear heat shrink on the shield wire at the bottom. Thank you for joining us for this training session today. Uh, I look forward to seeing more of these AC load cells in the future.